the reach GCW has right now, whether you love it or you hate it, you're still talking about it. Florida man. Why? There were school board meetings in Florida. I got in there and caused too much of a stir. Florida man was born. Where do you see GCW in a year or two? I can never see a TV deal with GCW. We're still very deathmatch heavy. I love your run with Sonny Kiss. The main objective was to get Sonny over and get Sonny on TV. And it was working. So back on the Indies now, and we're doing great. What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to Tank Count right here on Wrestling News Co. On today's edition, I'm talking to a man who's done pretty much everything it feels like in professional wrestling. It's Joe <laughs> Janella. How you doing today? I'm doing okay. Mm. Uh, like I said, I, I told you before we went on, uh, was in Vegas for three days. You know how that goes. A little bit too much fun. <laughs> yes. A little bit too much fun. So this morning, they got the real... Real sleepy, tired version of, I woke up, I rolled right out of bed, threw on a hoodie, went downstairs, did the interview. I believe it was been fightful. And then now you're getting the post-gym Joey Janela, which is rare, you know. A rarity here. Very good. Very good. You know, I like it. It's like a little extra spice. Now, a little, spice, a little bit of, uh, not, not, not ghost pepper spice, but just a little bit, just a little bit of a jalapeno. I was going to say, I'm obsessed with watching Hot Ones, so that might be uh, a little spice here. But before we jump into what's going on in the wrestling world today with you, I want to talk about something. The strangest place you've ever wrestled. Where was it, and what was your experience? Uh, I wrestled, uh, this is, someone brought this up the other day, so uh, this was easy to think of. I wrestled at a uh, tomato soup can factory once. Uh, I, have, I don't know what the reason was. Uh, it was some kind of uh, special event for the people who worked at the tomato stick plant. And uh, yeah, I, I wrestled there. And it was basically a ring in the middle of a large tower of tomato soup. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, that, I really don't have any more information. I don't remember who I wrestled. I don't remember what I got paid or if I got paid a tomato soup <laughs> I wrestled the tomato soup factory. I just imagine it's like, sorry, sir, we ran out of bowls. Just put your hands out and we'll put the ladle yes. soup in your hands. Like the people say, Joey, oh that was nice for a hot dog and a handshake. That was nice for a ten dollar gift card to Subway. Nah, I got paid in tomato soup. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was like fine. I did well it wasn't enough. And he was like, You want more? What was that? <laughs> well, we have this, um, yeah, I uh, can't even his name, uh, Stuart, it's not Stuart Little, it's, that's the mouse, right? I don't know what, yeah. Uh, please, please, Sam, I have some more. That, yeah. oh, yeah, we, we would go with that, I can't, is that Stuart Little, because that's a little mouse. So clearly, our uh, educational system here is failing us, not realizing a classic in, I believe, in the cinema, and of course, a book first. But, you know, we're wrestling fans, what are you going to do about that? Um, that's, that's kind of our MO. But there's so much happening with you in professional wrestling, though. And one of the craziest things, before we get into more current events, is Florida Man. Florida, Florida Man. What is Florida Man? Why did you come up with Florida Man? Why did you want to do this? Because I absolutely adore it and love it. But why? Um, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing, coming up with the Florida Man deal. Um, I think Drake Younger... A Drake Wards. He was a he was a, a deathmatch wrestler, and then he turned into a, a referee for the WWE. And uh, you know, the height of COVID, people were acting crazy and they're spouting off a lot of crazy conspiracies and stuff. And he was one of these guys. And uh, it was highly publicized on social media because we had nothing to do besides uh, sit in our houses and you know rot away. So. There were school board meetings in Florida. They were airing them live on YouTube. And uh, one day I was like, what if I just, the school board meetings like in my area in Orlando at the time where I lived. I said, what if I drive to the school board meeting and try to get on the live feed and uh, basically go up there and say my kids were almost in that. And I seen kids walk, getting walked on leashes with their masks and stuff. We didn't get that far, but... Um, 
why I was talking to David Bixon span, you know, the very polarizing David Bixon span, who I call Bix baby on Twitter DMs. And, uh, he was like, there's, he sent me the link and he said, there's a meeting going on right now. If you're interested in watching and having a good laugh. Um, and I was like, you know what, instead of watching it, I want to go to it. So I went to, I was driving back from the gym. I ran into a, um, I think it was a Marshall's store, picked up a pair of khaki pants, a plaid shirt, uh, went into the Walgreens, got a shit pair of sunglasses and a, uh, or, or Florida hat. Uh, I think that's what it said. I don't know what it said. It was Florida Endo or something. And we sped to this meeting and, uh, you know, I got in there and, um, I said, I was dropping my kids off at, uh, something and I'm, I'm late and I went in there and you know the rest is history initially I didn't get on the feed because I caused too much of a stir and I didn't play my cards right but it paid off the next day when I ended up on uh the main news in Orlando um as you know I when I woke up that day I couldn't believe my eyes and that the Florida man was born. Wow. Because, you know, I live in Boston, and on the radio, they randomly will uh, say stories like, Florida man, and they always try to, you know, it's always something crazy. Like, a man tries to have sex with an alligator. Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? Florida. And then it's always a scenario like that. It's true. I watched a man have sex with an alligator once in Florida. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, now, how much did that cost? Yeah. Uh, uh, Tomato uh, soup? More. Nah, it's a lot more than the donkey show in Tijuana. But, um, yeah, no, um, the Florida Man, it was just organically came about. And actually, some of the merch I put out for the Florida Man has been some of the best-selling merch I've ever done in my life. And that includes the AEW merch I've had, which I've sold quite a lot of that um, at a time. Uh, but, um, yeah, the Florida Man merch is very successful. People like the Florida man. You'll be seeing more of the Florida man soon. Okay. You don't know when. You don't know where. But the Florida man will be back. He's elusive. I need that fuck money. Well, yeah. Florida man creates fuck money. I need the fuck money. I need that lobster cash. So. Now, do you think that people who are buying the Florida man merchandise are people who believe the Florida man is a real person? Like, a, yeah. like an actual entity? Oh, or, or people are supporting you? You yourself knowing that what you're doing is like pretend. No, they're in on the joke. Okay, because I I imagine that someone's probably buying it thinking it's only real. Idiot. Only idiots are not in on the joke. It's like the cornet fans or the the real the real casual weirdo mainstream wrestling fans. They're they're the ones that are not in on the joke. Like, uh, and I'll see still comments to that day when. One of my matches is announced on a, another source, a new wrestling news source, and they go, oh, that Trumper idiot, that right-wing idiot. Uh, people that know me know I, I'm not a liberal or I'm not far right. Uh, I think I think politics are ridiculous um, yes. at the moment. So I really don't go to, because if you go far on either side, you're, you're walking into a, a uh, uh, echo chamber cesspool of information that, you know, quite frankly, that I don't want to hear. So, yeah, agreed. I've worked in the news industry for 15 years, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's frightening out there how crazy some people can be. I always I always watched uh, even growing up, always flip back and forth between CNN and Fox News. I still do. I did it the other night in the hotel. See what's on the hotel. See what's on CNN. Flick. See what's on Fox News. So, it's all, I on, the, I, on the bottom I, of the screen. It's always crazy. The supers, like the words they write, sometimes I'm like, they this is insane what they're writing on the bottom for both shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I am interested in politics, you know, and interested in now, you know, watching these wackos on either side go at it. But that's about it, you know. And mm. uh, it's basically my Sasha Baron Cohen character, and uh, I expect to have more fun with it in the future. Well, you had fun when your video went viral appearing at a Hulk Hogan karaoke party. Now, yes. that, again, that was the moment where everyone 
on Twitter and that world, we were all just glued going, how does no one know like what's happening here? So explain to me how this all comes to be, because obviously even when I go to karaoke a random night, it's hard to get up there because of the, like the normal locals who go there all the time. How are you even able to get up there to sing a song at this whole Kogan karaoke party? Well, you got there early. Um, you know, a lot of people know the story that I've had this, I've had this in my back pocket for a long while. And uh, it would just so happen once again, an organic situation where I knew a few wrestlers a few people we were GCW was in Orlando that weekend and the karaoke is Monday. They said they were a hoagie karaoke. I changed my flight and uh, I said, all right, let's do this. And uh, originally I had a whole idea that I was going to bring a fuck. Like when I came up to your original plan, I was going to bring a Dr. Fauci cut out on stage and get Hogan to me and Hogan to beat it up and drop the leg on it. And I was going to sing a song. There was a song by TLC called No Scrubs. Yeah. I was going to sing a song called No Vaccines. I don't want the vaccine. The vaccine is poisonous to me. Something, something. I forgot what I was going to say, but fuck Dr. Fauci. And then hopefully all the Florida men and women sing along with me. And hopefully we get it on TMZ. But we went a much easier route. We sang uh, Proud to be an American. And I, I didn't know the words to that song. I think I rehearsed it, maybe. I went outside right before for 30 minutes and looked at the lyrics. Then we went up there and did it. It was very nerve-wracking. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And it went viral. And and once again, you make a lot of make a lot of merch money off that. And I came out with the No Holds Barred parody shirt of me facing Hogan. Um and then that shirt sold like crazy. And I see that shirt all over the place. Every show I do, I'm wearing that shirt. So it's fun. It's fun to me. I, it's it's so good. much fun. Yeah, I, so have you, like, Brian Nobbs or, like, Hulk Hogan, did anyone actually speak to you after? I would, did you, like, take off your sunglasses and was like, aha, it's me? No, I uh, I went outside. I, I smoked a cigarette. I got changed in my regular clothes, threw my hair down, and just walked back in. I had the bracelet in. And I don't even think they recognized it was me because uh, as Hogan was leaving, I walk up to Hulk Hogan and uh, Jimmy Lloyd was with me. And I said, uh, excuse me, Mr. Hogan, uh, my friend, my friend Jimmy here, he's terminally ill and he's going to die in a few weeks. Is there any way you can get a picture? And Hogan stopped what he was doing to get a nice picture of Jimmy Lloyd. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't think he knew it was. Who knows? Yeah, he's probably got a lot of things on his mind. I worked the hoaxer, you know. A lot of people don't get to work Hulk Hogan, brother, and I did it, so. Hmm, doesn't work for me, brother, but it worked for you that day. Hey, work for me, brother. Wow, I, I absolutely love it. That was one of the best videos that there ever was on the internet. I don't care, you know, you can talk about anything you want, but that moment of watching the reactions to, watching Brian Nobbs, like, like what, what? What's happening? What's happening? Like Hogan just eating his food. Hogan's like, mm -hmm, I guess I just, I don't know what's happening here, but I want to eat my food. Like that's obviously for the rest of your life. That question will be asked until the end of time on your deathbed as well, because that is a moment that no, like you said, you worked Hulk Hogan. Who the hell yeah, can say that? Classic moment in my life, and you know, it was fun, and uh, it was stupid, and it was lighthearted, and never, you know, I'm a huge. As a kid, I was a huge, huge Hulk Hogan mark. You know, that was like my first love for professional wrestling was the hoaxer. So, he'll always have a place in my heart. But what what year was that though? Uh, WCW Hogan, WWE Hogan. Which which I mean, era did you fall into love with Hogan? WWF Hogan. I was born in '89, so I was at the end of that big Hogan Hulkamania run, brother. Right, right, right. So I was big at W in yeah. eighty six when the NWO came around. So Hogan's been a part of my life for a very long time. Yeah. And now he's part of your life forever. I connected to connected to you with karaoke. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah. You know, you think it'd be wrestling, you know, you think, oh, well, I'll be a wrestler, Hogan wrestling. No, it's you, Hulk Hogan, karaoke. Yes. But uh I yeah, that's great. And you know, you've done so much already in your career, but You've you've obviously been injured a couple times here and there. What's your worst injury? Uh it was my knee injury 
I'm blowing out my MCL, my PCL, and my meniscus. Uh, that's a rough injury. Um, it's just on a simple cross body and the floor was slippery and my opponent was too far and it was hard enough. And the way I landed, the floor was covered with beer and I had a broken foot at the time. Uh, light break in my other foot, so it was hard to plant on that foot. So on the non-broken leg, I planted on that leg and with the slipperiness of the floor, my knee shifted out to the and just blew out my shit. But as far as injuries, I've been pretty pretty lucky. Knock on wood. The thing it was wood. I've been pretty lucky and uh I've only been out a few times and that was the longest I've been out. My thumb injury from the roof bump, I you've heard it enough. Uh I was only out for a few months and I've been out here and there for concussions and head injuries, as everyone in wrestling is. As much as a lot of people don't want to um, acknowledge that, it is a serious part of our business. So whenever I get a, a thing or a concussion, I take a, a good month off. And uh, But besides the knee injury, I've been pretty fortunate. So with your knee injury, though, and the floor being slippery, is that a... Because I remember, like, Danhausen had the same kind of issue where you're at events that have staff but not as much as most likely everyone would want. So on the floor, they spilled beer... Yeah, no one's that's a problem. Standing room concert environment at, at that venue was uh in Asbury Park. Um and uh everyone's standing close, so you're not gonna have people mopping up beer during it. So it is what it, the risk we take. But those environments are the funnest, I think. Yeah? Mm-hmm. The the because I I you know the only time I was ever in like those rowdiest crowds, but it was also kind of like you know it was ECW, but it was one night stand number two when Rob Van Dam beat Cena. So it's like it's a WWE event. There's security. There's this and this. But Jesus Christ, people are standing on the chairs. People are falling all over each other. I've never yeah. been to an event you're describing where it it seems like a little of fun, but also chaos. Yeah, I like that's the type of wrestling I like. That's why I, that's why I love GCW. Because you never know what you're gonna get with that audience. It's a very cool. Yes. Very when they performed at the Hammerstein Ballroom, I think it was about a year ago now, maybe now, for the first time, yeah. it was such a huge, monumental event, and it was it was like a next coming of GCW. Like, where do you see GCW say like in a year or a couple of years? Because it seems like every organization is landing on some sort of streaming platform or getting a TV deal or losing a TV deal. But yet, where do you think say GCW landing, say in a year or two? Um, I think we have to go back to Hammerstein. I think we have to, uh, we made a few mistakes on that show, but we do have another chance to go to that building and, you know, do it, do it the right way, you know, running event that big for Brett Lauderdale and for GCW staff, it was, we pulled it off, but we could have pulled it off better. And I think next time we will. So, but I don't think I can never see a TV deal. I can never see any of that with GTW. It's just, uh, just like ECW, as soon as they sold out and went to television, it was kind of over for them. You know, you can't really pull that off, you know, Jokes. Uh, with type of product, you know, we're still very deathmatch heavy, you know, and you know, we're not doing as much deathmatch wrestling as we used to do, but still, it is um something we do uh, here and there for big shows and whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, I can't see that uh, being something people want on their TV stations. Yeah, there's plenty of TV stations. You know, when I was a kid, it was uh, like 62 channels. Now there's like 62,000 channels. So there's got to be something out there. But you mentioned mistakes at the Hammerstein Ballroom uh, event. What mistakes were there? Because for at least for me as an, a viewer watching it, there was some random moments of like, why isn't why aren't certain stars more prominently presented on this program? But I don't work there. What was your thoughts on this? I think it was a matter of some of the... Uh some of the booking um uh, some of the uh booking uh situations that happened on that show um some of the natural you know uh not natural some of the main stars of GCW just 
lots of matches or weren't put over the right way. I wrestled Cardona, and Cardona at the time was top GCW guy, one of the top guys, still is. Uh, so that wasn't an issue. Uh, plus the timing of the show, plus it being on uh, Brett putting out on real pay per view last second. Um, he, we never had a show time like that, but he's learned from his mistakes how to time out a show these days. He wants everyone to stick to their times. So if we ever have a, a situation like that again, you know, we could, you know, knock it out of the park. So that's successful shows. One of the most successful shows yeah. in the history of the company. A lot of money was made that day. But mistakes were made and there was a lot of people viewing coming into GCW for the first time. A lot of people that never seen some guard top guys for the first time. And um you know, mistakes were made. And uh you know, that is what it is. It's growing pains. You know Right. Right. So, well, you know. people didn't stop our momentum, you know. We every building we go to, we basically sell out. Every market we go to, we sell out. We went to Cork at all. That that was even a bigger deal than going to Hammerstein Ballroom and uh we knocked it out of the park. And uh you know, I think we'll have another shot at Hammerstein and we'll have other shots at situations like that and i think uh it will be it will it will work out in our favor yeah and i, I think that event also brought in a lot of outs, outside eyeballs who didn't who weren't familiar or didn't watch but knew of gcw and was tuning in because of just the location it was the yeah. monumental event it's on pay-per-view it's come it's something like different we knew of gcw but we weren't very aware of it as much but that event opened up a lot of eyeballs to it as well so i think the hardcore this is, this is me thinking the hardcore gcw fans were like this isn't the GCW I fell in love with versus the yeah. outside eyeballs coming in going, oh, what is this? This is interesting. Yeah, it did a lot more good than bad. I'll say that much. Yeah. Uh, for, and for the GCW brand. But we will get there again. There's been talks. And, of course. Uh, of course. You know, we're, um, we're, we're going to hit a grand slam with that one. I'll tell you that much. For I sure. can't wait. I can't wait because again, more companies for more wrestlers to work in more events for fans to get their uh, feet wet because for so long, you only have one company. Well, now you have so many companies that it's, uh, it's allowing everyone to make money from just cameramen to audio to production, makeup, uh, everything. It's not just wrestlers. So I hope, I hope GCW continues on and moves forward and it's, it's everywhere. So it's not like it's a, it's not like one show did anything. So. It's one of the things in the world right now, I think. I'm 100%. Oh, yeah. We, every market we go to, no matter what, and that the reach of GCW has right now, whether you love it or you hate it, you think it's much show, you think it's outlaw bullshit, um, you're still talking about it. There's people wearing GCW shirts all over the place. You watch Monday Night Raw, you watch AEW Dynamite, you'll always see someone there with a GCW logo on their shirt. And that's... The type of reach we have, that's why we are kind of similar to what the ECW was, you know, so. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I, yeah, I I think yeah, everything's going great with them. So with AEW, though, when you were first brought in there, how did you end up with the company right off the bat? Like, who did who called you? Did you call someone? Because this was, when we were told about AEW, we it was sold at least on the internet and through the press conferences that there it was gonna be health insurance. There's gonna be health insurance. There's gonna be Medicare. There's gonna be this. Gonna be that. And then that didn't happen. So it, never it, be professional wrestling, unfortunately. Yeah, never health insurance and wrestling. It'll never be. It's just too wild of a thing to for the unionize the business. But I got in there. I was just a most buzzworthy independent guy at the time. Uh, a lot of people that hate on me, hate on AEW, say, you know, they're, they're friends with the Young Bucks, best friends. They got all their friends hired. They got some of their friends hired, but I only met the Young Bucks twice before I did all it. Uh, they just do about me and my videos and my reputation on the independence and my buzz. And uh, I asked them if I could be on All In, and they said, let's figure it out. We think you do fit in on this show. And I went from maybe being in that battle royal to having a match with Bubba Ray Dudley to having a match with Hangman Adam Page, which we sold the show and which earned me that contract um, with AEW. And that was it. And, uh, you know, they trust me for a little bit, but, you know, I'm not, I've never been 
with a major company like that, I don't know how to play the, my cards at that time. Um, but, you know, I think it worked out. People to still talk about me and my AEW on every day on social media. My matches with Moxley or my matches with Kenny or at the very end, my feud with Sonny Kiss uh, when COVID kind of let up because that was a dark time. Uh, but, you know, I had fun and uh, I wish them well and, you know, I have a lot of friends there and I wish them uh, great success. I well, I loved your run with Sunny Kiss though, because I thought the vignettes. I, I, I was just gonna ask the vignettes that were being recorded by you and Sunny, and it was it's it like I felt like there was a storyline. There was like a story to what was going on versus some of the matches. And this is your cup. This is this is not me saying one thing about one company, but for me, I need a story. Why are two men fighting in a ring? And I felt like with you and Sunny, you were creating a narrative. You were creating a story that was leading to something, and it felt yeah. like on TV, yeah. off TV, on TV, off TV. Like, who first Never. off you put that together, and then what happened with it? Well, we were just in purgatory at the time as a tag team, and we, they weren't doing anything with us. And I said, someone has to turn on somebody, or else we're going to be stuck here, and you know, and this is going to be it. Uh, the main objective was to get Sonny over, and get Sonny on TV. That was my main objective with this whole thing and it was working because the responses from the crowds were were incredible um cody basically just said all right tell me what you want to do tonight tell me what you want to do next week oh, i'll fund this vignette for you guys tell me tell them what you want to do with this vignette T tell me how you want to end this but it never made it to tv uh it was all youtube and whatnot and it would have been a great way to get to back to tv with me and sunny um, you know, featured because we were getting great reactions and uh, we had great matches and we sold the show in Newark at the Prudential Center. Our match was 12 minutes. It got cut down to, I think, seven minutes. And we tore it up there. We tore it up on the, the dark, dark show. Um, where, uh, we had a street fight. We tore it up there and I was getting great responses. And uh, I asked... I asked Tony, I said, who do you want up in this final match? And he said, I want you up because we're going to bring you back to TV. And uh, I was like, okay. And then uh, next week, Sonny was on, uh, I think he was on Dark. I gave him a pile driver off the stage. And I'm like, I just made our whole thing mean, mean nothing. I just gave him this huge pile driver off the stage, you know. He could elevate both of us. But he was on Dark. Um the next week wrestling and I think it just made everything look bad and I complained and I said Tony what's this what's this deal right here and he says well there's people that get hit by cars and they're back on TV the next week that if that's your way of thinking about wrestling that's your way and I was just like I'm just not very happy with this situation and he said all right uh we'll book you for this week come wrestle Eddie Kingston uh in North Carolina in the special show they had and it is what it is like I gave him a super kick and, you know, it is what it is. This shit happens. Uh, his it broke his eye socket and he was going through a feud with Chris Jericho. So they weren't, Chris Jericho was happy. No one was happy. So it is what it is. And I just didn't want to sit there for, you know, another year and just deal with this heat and no one ever coming, confronting me and talking to me and telling me what I'm doing wrong or what I could do better. So back on the indies now and we're doing fucking great i oh man joey janela you are uh a wild one because you know it feels like everywhere i look you're on a poster your faces are everywhere so obviously the world is yours and you're going up in professional wrestling because you know clearly one company can't hold you down because you're everywhere we're, yeah we're back we've always been back actually the day i left aw i hit up uh tdt in japan and had a tour booked by the end of that night so you know, I've always been smart with this stuff and uh you know um you know I'm wrestling all these top guys all over the world you know I have the heaviest schedule out of any wrestler in the world right now so maybe some WWE WWE's going on they've been touring a lot doing a lot of house shows again so I don't know if that's the case but probably top three of this year I've had the heaviest schedule and I've traveled the world more than any wrestler in the last 12 months in the world. I can guarantee you that. And uh, 
So I'm still there. I'm still making money. I'm still having fun. And, you know, I don't have to deal with the politics. And, uh, you know, I am the I am the guy on the Indies. So I, I walk to the beat of my own drum again and we have fun. That's it. Well, I'm glad you're having fun because it seems like you're having fun and I'm glad you're having a good time. And I, I had a great time talking to you today as well on here on Tank Out because, you know, it's always good to hear the stories of why and when and how. And here we are. We found it out, all of it. And I'm so excited for what's happening with you in the future because, again, it seems like you're everywhere. 2023 was a great year for you, but 2024 obviously is going to be an even a better year for you. So thank you so much for being here on Tank Count. I'm Steve Ball. He's Joe Janela. Oh. A lot of big stuff in the works, 2024, guys. Uh, you know what? Let's plug it. What do you got? I can't talk about it yet, but if you hate me, you'll hate me more. If you love me, you'll love me more. Oh, my. More things coming, folks. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.